Okay, we're going to talk about the path of blood flow through the heart real quick. You start with the right atrium. I'm going to fall apart here. It begins in the right atrium. All of your deoxygenated blood from all over your body comes in here through the superior vena cava from the level above your heart, through the inferior vena cava from the level below your heart, and through the coronary sinus that drains all of the blood that actually is flowing through your heart itself. So all of those bring deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. You have a right auricle that kind of allows for more filling. Blood leaves the right atrium and it flows through a hole right here into the right ventricle. The right ventricle is going to be pushing blood to the lungs through the pulmonary circuit. So it's going to leave through this uh, vessel right here, which is the pulmonary trunk. But there's a valve up in there that you can see. That's the pulmonary semilunar valve. I forgot to tell you the valve that goes between the atria and the ventricle. That is the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve has uh, these white cords here known as chordae tendinae, and they are attached to these little bumps here called papillary muscles so that when those papillary muscles contract, they pull down the chordae tendinae and hold these valve uh, flaps shut. So when this ventricle contracts, it doesn't push blood back up into the right atrium. All right, so we go from right atrium through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle, through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk. Blood is going to leave the pulmonary trunk and it's going to split and go to the left pulmonary artery and to the right pulmonary artery. That's going to take blood to each lung. Okay. When it gets into the uh, each lung, it goes from the pulmonary arteries to the pulmonary arterioles to the pulmonary capillaries and the capillaries are always where you have gas exchange so you're going to drop off that excess CO2 you're going to pick up oxygen in the pulmonary capillaries then you're going to bring blood back into the heart through two vessels one from the right side and one from the left side that's going to be the pulmonary veins notice they're red but they're red because it's oxygenated blood so the pulmonary veins come in from the right side and the pulmonary veins come in from the left side you can always remember the pulmonary veins because they're like little twins. Okay, they're going to dump blood into this brown chamber here, which is the uh, left atrium. This is fresh, oxygenated blood that we want to push out to the rest of our body. So we're going to fill up the left atrium, then we're going to send blood through the bicuspid valve down through to the uh, left ventricle. Notice how thick the left ventricle is compared to the right ventricle. The right ventricle is only pumping blood to the uh, lungs, the left ventricle has to pump blood all the way to the uh, rest of the body. So blood leaves the left ventricle through this valve way back up in here, which is your aortic semilunar valve. The aortic semilunar valve um, opens blood up into the aorta, so you have the ascending aorta, the aor aortic arch, and then <clears throat> when it goes down, it's the descending aorta. So all of your oxygenated blood is going to somehow come off of this aorta. Um, the first person to get, or first place to get blood, though, is the heart itself. So we're going to take this fresh oxygenated blood, and we're going to give the heart that blood. So we've got a right coronary artery coming off the aorta that goes down and branches into a right uh, marginal artery, and then it goes around to the back side of the heart, in between the ventricles, as the posterior interventricular artery. So it's on the back side of the heart, so it's posterior, it's between the ventricles, so it's interventricular artery. Okay? Then you have the left coronary artery is going to come off the aorta, go under this pulmonary trunk, and it's going to come out as this one little bitty piece right there. Then it's going to divide immediately into the anterior, because we're on the front of the heart, interventricular artery, also known as the left anterior descending artery, so you can call it the left anterior descending artery or the anterior interventricular artery. That's going to feed the uh, ventricles in the front. Then it's going to also curve around, you see that little piece right there? That curves around as the circumflex artery, and that's going to go around and feed the left side of the heart, the, mostly the left ventricle. So now the whole heart has gotten fresh oxygenated blood. Now the heart's going to take that blood, it's going to make ATP, it's going to produce CO2 um, as a byproduct, and so now we've got to get rid of all that yucky blood with CO2. So on the front side of the heart, you have the great cardiac vein, which runs right in that interventricular septum. 
On the back side of the heart, you have in that interventricular septum the middle cardiac vein. And then on the right side of the heart, next to the marginal artery, you've got the small cardiac vein. So the great cardiac vein on the front, middle cardiac vein on the back, and the small cardiac vein on the side all drain together into this big vessel here known as the coronary sinus on the back side of the heart. And then the coronary sinus is going to dump that blood into that right atrium so that it can go back to the lungs and get refreshed. So there is your heart.